to Baking with a Purpose. I'm Jamie and today we're going to be talking about issues with the healthcare system and we're going to be making a chocolate cake with chocolate frosting. I'm really excited about this one. And so one of the reasons I wanted to talk about issues within the healthcare system in terms of reproductive health is because, because there was a lot of comments about this from the people I interviewed um, as well as um, we got to hear the perspective of a medical professional and what she thinks about this issue. Um, so before we dive in, I'm just going to give you a little bit of background on what we're talking about. And so we know that issues that women have faced in the healthcare system are nothing new. And in 1993, 27 years ago, a law was lifted um, our law was put in place saying that clinical trials had to have, most clinical trials had to have female participants. And even now, uh, drug tests and like tests for treatments are only really done on male rats and male humans. And so Maya Dustenberg, she is a journalist and she's written a book on how women are treated in the healthcare system. She said that women's symptoms are often brushed off as hysteria thanks to the common stereotype that women are hysterical, women are dramatic, women are emotional and so that really hinders women from getting help, the help that they need and this is even worse for women of color and this is something that's not always known but um, black women are between two and six times more likely to die from pregnancy related complications than are white women. Um, a study done by the Journal of Perinatal Education attributes this difference to, um, quote, quality of prenatal delivery and postpartum care, as well as interactions between health-seeking behaviors and satisfaction with care. So again, this ties into access, like we talked about in episode one, where they may just not have access to the same quality medical care that white women have access to. At this point, Women make up 70% of chronic pain patients, things like endometriosis, fibromyalgia, things like that, but only 20% of pain medications are actually tested on women. And this is a really serious issue um, because women who mostly are patients of chronic pain don't have access to medicines that work for them. So they have to hop around a lot and this is really important with reproductive health because there's a lot of reproductive conditions that can cause pain and if there isn't any kind of cure or treatment then women are forced to just live with that pain. But obviously this is a huge issue and it's something that's not commonly known but raising awareness is the first step. So to raise awareness today I'm going to be frosting a message on a chocolate cake with chocolate frosting and um, we're going to hear from some real women and some real providers about their experience. So if you want to see the final product, stick around and we'll see how it goes. All right, I've got my apron on, I've washed my hands, we're going to get started. And I am going to link the recipe in the description if you want to follow along with me. So you are going to need a cup of all-purpose flour, a half teaspoon of baking soda, and half a teaspoon of baking powder, half a cup of cocoa powder, one cup of sugar, one quarter teaspoon of kosher salt or just regular iodized salt, one egg, one cup of buttermilk, one quarter cup of unsalted butter melted, um, one third cup of oil, I, you can use vegetable or canola, canola oil, um, I used vegetable. And the recipe calls for one teaspoon of vanilla extract but I use about a teaspoon and a quarter. My secret for making a good chocolate cake is adding a little bit extra vanilla. I really like my, my gynecologist, um, but it's been lower before with either different doctors or just like, I don't know, like hard, just complicated situations that take a lot of trial and error. Um, I don't need birth control like for birth control 
but I need it for, I've taken it for other stuff um, in the past. And so like, it hasn't been the greatest experience. Um, and also I haven't always had doctors who have listened to me or like understood what my needs are. Um, it tends to, it's tended to be kind of like assumed heterosexuality, which is like, you shouldn't have to spell out for a doctor if you're not, but like that's happened a lot. Um, also, like no choice. Like I've had doctors straight up be like, um, "I won't do this surgery, even though you need it, because you're too young, or because I don't believe that you can have this." Um, even though even it'll be like a woman doctor, right? You know, or whatever. Um, but I think that every like regardless of a doctor's beliefs or like it shouldn't it shouldn't not like that should not be a part of the equation if somebody's suffering that they should have access um to a surgery like just because there's a chance that somebody's um reproduction is if could be affected like in my case my reproduction could have been affected it wasn't like i was i wasn't even asking like take my ability to have kids away or something. It was like, right. I, my, I could have had something affected. And the doctor was a woman doctor was like, no, I'm not doing this because there's a chance and I'm not comfortable with that. Like, that's kind of crazy to have somebody suffer so much that they're like, just like disabled from like the amount of suffering you know right um I think that that that's kind of crazy yeah I agree and and nobody should make that call for somebody else's life that's a lot of power it's a lot of grief in what I do with um loss pregnancy loss um with women who have complications during their pregnancies um, and for expectations that women have when they come in to have babies they are they don't want certain things they do want certain things and sometimes they don't end up with what they want so it's it can lead to a lot of postpartum depression um, PTSD. Um, so yeah, it's kind of, there's a, you know, women come in thinking, oh, I just, I want this unmedicated vaginal delivery. And sometimes they end up with a C-section. And so it, that expectation can be very difficult. So now the cakes are out of the oven and it's time to make the frosting. The recipe that I've linked below is only enough frosting for one layer of cake. So what we're gonna do is double it. So whatever you see in the recipe, if you're making a two layer cake then I, like I am, you're gonna wanna double the frosting. So here's what you're gonna need. One cup of softened butter, unsalted. Two cups of powdered sugar and half a cup of cocoa powder. One quarter teaspoon of salt. One teaspoon of vanilla. Um, I also have used about a teaspoon and a quarter because like I said earlier, I usually add a little bit extra vanilla to my chocolate cake. You're also gonna need some milk. The recipe calls for whipping cream. I think that 2% works just as well and I haven't measured it out because you're gonna use it uh, depending on the texture of the frosting. So once you get it all mixed together, you'll know how much liquid you need to add. I have also gone ahead and made some pink frosting uh, so that I can write on my cake. I use the Russian buttercream recipe from episode one and I'll link that down below. 
Um, if you want to make this pink like I did, you'll just need a couple of drops of red food coloring or um, just a tiny bit of red gel food coloring. You know, one thing that's sort of interesting that, that people may not know, but I, you know, as American women, we have some of the least access to contraceptive options than compared to women on the worldwide market. So one of the most interesting things, probably one of the best contraceptives that is available to women today are IUDs. And I'm a huge fan of IUDs, but due to both political and economic reasons, American women have access to, I would say sort of two and a half IUDs, if, if you look. I mean, there's two basic ones and there's a couple different sizes. However, if you look on the world market, there's a, maybe about 20 different IUDs. Um, so um, it's really interesting. I've had women who have quote unquote failed the American IUDs and then done some medical tourism and gotten a different style and had it work really effective for them. And so it's, you know, it's it's really upsetting to me as a practitioner when I have a woman in my office that's maybe interested in that kind of contraception and I can be like, yeah, here is this best one and I can't offer it to you. Right. <laughs> so that's you know that's you know really upsetting and the reasons I think that the, that these other IUDs are not available in America is one it's really expensive to they're they're labeled as medical devices and it costs millions of dollars to bring them to market here so it's not cost effective and then you know it's such a political um, hot button I think also that there's just not a lot of lot of interest so the cakes are done the frosting is done and tastes good and we're gonna do the cake frosting and decorating so the uh, message that I chose for this cake is believe her well the reason I chose this is as you heard in the interviews uh, many of the women that I spoke to have had problems with doctors just not being uh, educated enough on their specific situation or not believing their pain or refusing to do surgeries because it could impact their future fertility and these are things that could be understandable but are often difficult to cope with as a patient and so it's very important for women to advocate for themselves in a medical setting and that can often be hard it shouldn't necessarily be a requirement for women to have to stand up for themselves and to like insist that they have symptoms. It should just be a given that if somebody comes to the doctor and says, I'm in pain, that they should be helped and believed. So that is what we're gonna frost our cake with and we'll see how it looks. I think that it should be less gendered, like, or the way we talk about it assumes that you're cis or that you're hetero and um, it should also be disability inclusive. Like a lot of disabled folks will like go to the doctor and they won't bother asking them if they're sexually active because they just assume no. Um, that's the thing that happens a lot and I think that disability sexual education should be included and like assumed. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, um, so you, you, you see a lot of women. Um, what do you think in your experience is the best way to empower women to care about their health and to be like advocates for themselves? Well, you know, I think number one is for them to have a positive healthcare experience. And, you know, I see patient after patient, particularly women, who have been abused by the medical system. And I think a lot of women pretty early in their life get turned off by doctors because they go to a doctor with a legitimate health concern and they get the yes, dear. Like, oh, it's just in your head, dear. Oh no, that's, you know, or it's just your hormones, dear, like that. And they, they get discounted and then it doesn't really make them want to seek care because every time they go, their, their concerns are not respected. Um, you know, I think it makes a huge difference um, for women to have providers that they feel comfortable with. I've certainly had to work with a lot of women. You know, I always love the honor to do uh, a woman's first pap smear. And I've certainly worked with a lot of women who have had, you know, either 
very poorly performed past mirrors verging on abuse. And, you know, I think making that sort of those early first healthcare experiences um, really positive, I think has a huge impact where, where, where women actually feel comfortable and, and you know, confident, um, you know, going to a provider and seeking care. That it's like, yeah, it's just a medical procedure and it's not like, you know, but I don't know, I don't know how we're going to get away from it right now. Yeah, advocate for yourself. Be your own advocate because you have to. Mm -hmm. Here it is, the finished decorated cake chocolate cake with chocolate frosting and a Russian buttercream writing. So there you have it, our chocolate cake with chocolate frosting and our Believe Her decoration. In the next episode, uh, we're going to be talking about men and the issues surrounding their participation in reproductive health and different things they can do to support women in their lives, in their communities, and in our nation. We're gonna be making red velvet cake with cream cheese frosting, and I'm really excited about that one. That one is my mom's favorite, so hopefully that's a good one. Um, so be sure to check out um, the links in the description. I put the, the recipes in the description box, and I've also linked all the sources that I used for this episode as well as different resources like Planned Parenthood, just like general reproductive health resources. Um, if you have a question or you just want to chat or you want to comment, definitely leave a comment and I'll answer. And um, see you next time. Thanks for watching.